mix masala with tg in this episode we shall learn about crows yes you heard it right crows ravens and the corvid family but we will focus on the crows it has been one of my favorite birds since childhood and yep these are few things i want to share it with you and hopefully it can give you a different perspective about crows in general so let's get into it i found this interesting uh, website uh, www.allaboutbirds.org it's a very good website because it has an option to listen to the calls of different birds for today we are just going to for this podcast we are going to just focus on the corvidae family so that includes jays crows magpies raven and henceforth so let's listen to their calls one by one first we have canada j this is green j peon j Stellar's J Blue J Florida Scrub J Common Raven Chihua one raven So a general idea about you know how if we start to give attention to the calls the different calls these birds give there's actually huge difference I have always enjoyed uh, when I was in Macleod Gunge and uh, Yeah my mom she is an environmental activist and had always encouraged us to you know like be environmental friendly and to be outdoor which included being outdoor means uh, there was no tv at home so uh, all of us will have to we, we were to go out play outside uh, i would roam around in the jungles in the forest because i would go and uh, search for these birds i used to have pair of binoculars always hanging around my neck i had a hat <laughs> i i used to wear shorts and i'm wearing shorts even today i mean i I'm, i'm not comfortable with the uh, pants but yeah uh, these are few calls of you know normal crows and ravens and maybe the next time you're out in the forest or you're visiting a very beautiful place with lot of nature around maybe you can just switch off your phone for some time sit under the sky or the trees and give your ears some wonderful calls there's a popular fable story called the crow and the pitcher about the crow in the desert who is thirsty the crow comes upon the pitcher of water but the beak is not long enough to access the water in the pitcher he realizes that if he tips the pitch pitcher over 
he might lose all of the water in it. So he decides to innovate and starts putting pebbles in the pitcher of water. Eventually, the pebbles displace the water at the bottom of the pitcher, pushing the liquid up to a level where the crow can drink. This is a very common story and I'm sure all of us have have heard it at least once when we were kids and the yeah of course the moral of the story is you know how the crow is able to overcome this obstruction you know and what we get to learn is crow is a problem solver it's very intelligent I remember once I had this noodle packet called Maggie. I mean, if you are in India, I'm sure everybody knows Maggie. Even the crows do. <laughs> so I just went out, I bought a Maggie and I had... Uh, yeah, I was just coming back home, I think, and I had this Maggie packet in my hand and suddenly this crow comes and whoosh, takes it off my hand and I'm looking at it, the crow flies to a height with the Maggie packet, opens the Maggie with its beak and with its uh, claws and then starts eating the Maggie. So since that experience, I've always been a big fan of crows, magpies, jays, nutcrackers, and ravens and, and crow the corvid family is very famous because of its intelligence its history with its environment and how you know with different different times the interpretation of this specifically this bird species is interpreted it's very interesting but I'm not going to go into all of this because it's a very 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 big world but then there are few points I would like to share for with you so things like they are they have problem-solving skills the spirit of crow should remind us all to leverage our wits so solve our problems it's easy to get emotional when we uh, face challenges in life the crow reminds us to step back take a deep breath cock your heads and look at the challenge from a very different perspective and then the crow also symbolizes adaptability so while many of us see crows as on a regular basis it is important that we don't take these clever creatures for granted right after all they have shown an uncanny ability to survive in the human dominated world so they must be doing something right because it, it's able to adapt and embrace the changes if a crow crosses your path it could be a sign that you have the ability to handle yourself in any situation even if you don't always feel that way don't let sudden upheavals in your life or other people's drama ruffle your feathers <laughs> the crow spirit animal helps you to adapt and to soar above the fray find a safe place to perch and watch it all unfold just like my Maggie packet <laughs> was torn and I watched it all unfold being flexible and open to new situations undoubtedly uh, one of the keys to crow survival in the environment that are challenging for 
other animals is that like coyotes and raccoons crows are omnivorous crows will eat anything <laughs> from other birds to fruits vegetables seeds nuts mice fish frogs carry on and dog treats yeah <laughs> so if you if you go to dog parks out on Italy, you have seen crows hanging around looking for spare treats uh, if the crow was a sufi poet the crow would say to you this too shall pass <laughs> the, crow, the crow reminds you that the one thing we can all be certain about is that things change resisting change is like living in a state of denial the crow spirit reminds you to be flexible instead of rigid be open to new experiences whether they are as simple as culinary experiences to trying out a new skill or inviting new people in life sometimes change that you fear or dread can turn out be one of the best things that ever happened to you other factors that we can actually learn from crows and the ravens and the family the corvid family are the teamwork and the reciprocity while ravens tend to stick with their significant other crows like to gather in large groups sometimes in hundreds or even thousands in numbers the term a uh, murder of crows is often used to describe these large groupings possibly because these clever and social birds seem like they are plotting something when they are together it's not by coincidence that alfred hitchcock chose large groups of crows to be his main perpetrators in the classic films the birds however in reality crows are social and playful birds who use over 200 50 different calls when they are communicating with each other crows collaborate with each other uh, to drive other birds such as hawks and owls away from their territory in addition they are known to seek out other crows to notify them about good food sources yet even though they are highly social and flock together in large groups crows are monogamous and made for life one of my favorite stories about crows that demonstrates their understanding of teamwork and the concept of give and take is the bbc video gift giving crows girl who feeds them i think it's available in youtube or you might find it in the BBC website. Mostly likely a person who values relationships and see in life as the saying goes it's not what you know but who you know. All of us are smarter than one of us. Cool, huh? Share your relationships with your family, your friends, your colleagues, and above all, your significant other. If you are, if you are a very dependent or single, and a crow crosses your path, it could be a sign that one of your soul mates is seeking you. While soulmates can be romantic partners, they can also be close friends, business partners, and family members. Not meant to 
go it alone grows meaning for transformation between the material and spirit worlds as carry on eating birds they are often present in times of death which is likely the reason they are associated with dying death is a frightening concept to many of us and hence crows are often seen as scary birds however death is actually a transformation instead of ending right this depiction of crows as scary which has been passed down from generation to generation is why they are so closely associated with halloween graveyards and the like some death related scene happening you find this huge flock of crows flying around and yeah they're just visible there even in movies like harry potter a lot of the uk based movies also they tend to have a lot of crows uh, which can have their own meaning for sure but then again we the trajectory again moves towards death uh, take a good example uh, harry potter you know in the time of uh, the execution of buckbeak i think it was buckbeak yeah right outside uh, hagrid's uh, cabin uh, you would see a lot of crows ravens hanging around right so so we get an idea even because it's dull it's black it's not so beautiful as let's say a peacock or you have its significance with its culture this depiction of crows as scary has been of course passed down from generation to generation and and you know in fact in swedish folklore crows were thought to be the ghosts of murdered people who didn't have a christian burial also in germany they were thought to contain the souls of the damned so, uh, yeah so it's pretty interesting to see how every culture associates with different animals and uh, have their interpretation usually it's because of the visual aspect you know the black color and so on you know if it's bright and beautiful then suddenly it means wow if it's uh, let's say a lion or a bald eagle you know then it's majestic and powerful you know but then now people are finding out actually these animals crows is actually very smart and there's tons and tons of things we can learn from them yeah we will continue the rest in the coming episode in sunday on sunday where we will be focusing on crows and its cultural context with regards to mythology so ranging from native americans to australian aborigines buddhism asian countries greek mythology and so on without much ado do follow on my social media platforms Uh, facebook instagram youtube soundcloud spotify and behance if you are into new sounds experimental sounds you can follow rishi nair my f- very good friend with whom i have been doing lot of learning in terms of uh, music and making the podcast as well uh, yeah you can follow him and listen to his music and also mine in soundcloud and for bonus episode yep we are going to share you one cool track 
yeah give me some feedbacks i want to improve my podcast channel in order to you know have you enjoy the sessions as well um, yeah thank you and have a good day and see you soon